I'm going to give you a little game now. Name association. I'm going to give you a sentence, a description, and you tell me who best fits that description, the first name off the top of your head. And the first one is the funniest person in the locker room. Kurt Henning. That was a quick one. Easy? Very funny. We'll move on. The smelliest wrestler. Oh, my God. There's a lot of wrestlers. Wrestling's funny because when you wrestle, your wrestling gear it gets all sweaty. And when you go to your room, if you don't air it out and put it on, you know, on the lampshade or, uh, you know, a nightstand and this and that, the smelliest wrestler ever. There was a there was a lot, a lot of mass people that you would wrestle and you would grab them in a hole and you go, holy shit. <laughs> uh, a particular person, I don't want to say a name of a person that smells because... They're gonna hear this, but uh, a lot of a lot of wrestlers who did not keep their hygiene up to par stunk in the ring. We stunk in the ring. We get two names quite often. You can just say who? one of them: uh, Vader and Balls Mahoney. Okay, I I never wrestled Vader. I never wrestled him, but I I, I would assume that his he had a mask on too. Didn't he? Yeah, yeah, Vader, yeah, Vader had a mask. Balls Mahoney, the funny thing about him is I just met his son. Okay. His son is like his twin. He looks exactly like him. And uh, I liked Balls. I never wrestled Balls either. He was an ECW guy, and he was like in a WWE for a cup of coffee. But uh, I couldn't believe his son. If you looked at him, you would go, holy shit, it's Balls. The same look, the same bite line, the same everything. Exact. And I told his wife that. His wife goes, I know. I know. I could see it, too. Uh, next one. Most in trouble with the office. At the time, at the time, Shawn Michaels was was a really, really uh, boisterous, very hard to do business with. Not today. Mm. He became a different person. Back then. Mm. Back then, he was very uh, boisterous. The most talented wrestler you ever, ever worked with? Same answer, Shawn Michaels. I wrestled him in oh. WWE. I wrestled him in WWE or uh, it, was a, it was E, I believe, in Madison Square Garden, the main event. Uh, ho hold, hold on to that. Hold on to that. I'm going to ask you about that later. We're going to get to that okay. entire story. Bear with me on that one. Okay. Um, we will move on. Um, stiffest slash most reckless wrestler you ever faced? Oh, reckless! Well, Bret Hart tur uh, works snug. I wouldn't call it stiff, but when he kicked you in the stomach, he kicked you in the stomach. It hurt, mm -hmm. but he wasn't reckless. He wasn't dangerous. Dangerous. I'm trying to think. Uh, Warrior was a little bit dangerous. I mean, he knocked me out twice, <laughs> and, and and if you weren't careful, yeah, you, you know, you, if you had him do things that he didn't know how to do, he would he would take your head off. Like the clotheslines were a little problem because he would close on your face, you know. So dangerous. I always danced around it. I knew I knew who was dangerous, and as a particular person, I couldn't. I'm trying to think right now who who would be dangerous. If you're dangerous, you wouldn't be in there. Yeah. They would they they, they would uh, they'd be revealed immediately and they would be taken out. The most memorable scene or thing that you ever saw on an aeroplane oh my god oh my god well you did you watch the uh dark side the, the plane ride from hell uh that's, that's quite a famous one. were you on that no i wasn't on that oh. i wasn't on that we were, were uh, you on the original plane ride from hell in the mid 90s because i do a weekly I, podcast I, with dutch mantel and he said that the entire roster was kicked off uh, a flight uh, to Germany, I think. There, there was a lot of dangerous plane rides. As soon as the alcohol started rolling, the boys would get rowdy. Mm. And uh, on on that one plane ride, I was telling you that I was not on. They they actually cut Michael Hayes' pigtail off. They actually, uh, Kurt Henning actually put shaving cream on Brock Lesnar's head. They started fighting in the on the plane. They slammed into the door, and everybody was really, really 
scared that because their body weight and hitting a door at 30,000 feet, that door could have swung open. Mm -hmm. But the airplanes, airplanes were, were terrible because wrestlers would do anything and say anything to anybody. And the, and the people were getting so annoyed at us. And the wrestlers would just tell the person, shut up. Just shut up. And, and, and you, you can't tell the flight attendant, well, this person did this, this person did that. It was a different world back then. It was a different world back then. It's like wrestlers, wrestlers in the 80s, wrestlers were so looked, looked upon highly. In the 90s, early 90s, they were looked upon highly. As time went on, the world evolved. Mm -hmm. Now, when when the, when the company went corporate, I would say that that changed a lot. The smoothest worker you ever wrestled? Oh my God, probably Undertaker. Really? He's like silk. He's like silk in the ring. I mean, when you touch him, he he never felt in a million years that that he would hurt you. Sean is like that. Sean is. Sean looks like. Like, like, like everything he's doing is so fancy, but I mean, he's like a feather. And then you just throw him to the corner and you say, do that thing you do. Hmm. Did you see that match I had with him in the garden? I thought it was a house show match. No, it, it was a house show match in the garden. Yeah. No, I've never seen in it. Ma Madison Square Garden. We will. That's, uh, a, hell of a, that's a hell of a story because yeah. you're going to want that hey, one. It, it, I promise you it's coming up. It's coming up. Um, I like this one. Loudest spot caller. Oh my God! There was a lot of them. There's a lot of them. Where they would, where they would call, and you hear the first, people in the first row go, "I heard that! I heard that!" You know what I mean? But uh, a particular person would allowed a loud spot caller. I they would usually cover their mouth, and I would say a lot of people. It happened. It probably happened a handful of times in my career. Where the people were were uh, a little bit too loud, mm -hmm. a little bit too loud. You see, I would always go, I would always be like, you know, when I get my hands on you, I I'm gonna beat the hell out of you, and then when I push you, you're gonna fall down, and then you're gonna push, you're gonna push, you know, you're gonna go back, and then you're gonna push me, and I'm gonna fall down, and then after that, I'm gonna really give it to you. And I would tell them in the promo, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. but. Uh, but it, 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 it's it's hard to. That's why I tell you to watch that series because you could see how it actually works in that in that in that program. Uh, because, sorry, uh, uh, most I habitual. Uh, uh, I've got about maybe two or three more. So uh, this one, most legit, tough, badass. Oh, cool. That's an easy one. Everyone says anything. Uh, have you ever seen Haku in action for yourself? Or is it all third hand information? No, it's not third hand. The man the man was tough as hell. The man was insane. Mm -hmm. I believe there was an actual instant where he uh he uh got arrested and he broke the handcuffs one time. Mm -hmm. He just like yeah, he, he, he's got like a he had like a head like a gasoline can. It was just like a he don't look like he would he would be violent or he wasn't violent, but don't mess with him. Yeah. Don't mess with him. Most memorable backstage fight. Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. Oh, you, you were there for it then? I'm the actual one who came out until the agents there. Uh, Bret and Shawn are going at it. Are, are going at it. and uh, But the funny thing about it is they were in the shower and they they both grabbed each other's hair because they both had long hair. So they were, they were stagnant. They really couldn't do anything because they were... They were, you know, th their movement was like they can't go nowhere because they they're holding their their hair, but they hated each other. They hated each other, and uh, that all goes into that one, one story with Madison Square Garden because it's an interesting one. I don't know if you want to hear that one now. There's there's too many. There's like a thousand stories. I that, know, that I know. You couldn't even you know you couldn't hit these in twenty interviews. <laughs> Uh, I'm telling you. I promise you. I promise you. I'll get to it. Uh, best and worst celebrity guest hosts for Raw. Gerard Butler. You know what that is? Oh yeah. Okay. He. We always had a celebrity GM for like about a year or two. So every week there was a different celebrity. 
So I would be the one. By that time, I was I was running the interview room, which was called the pre-tape room, and I would have them do radio spots, read prompter, do this and do that. And he's in the room, and for being a famous actor, he couldn't read the prompter. I was giving him simple liners to say, like, repeat this after me. I'm here tonight at Monday Night Raw, and it's one of the highest highs I've ever had. He can say that. You know what I'm saying to myself? How the hell do you do these movies if you can't say a simple line? Or, or now he's probably mad if he hears this, mm. you know. But I, I, I gotta say, he was, it was very not difficult, not being difficult, but not, not very spontaneous. Like, like some people are like, like very smooth talkers. You know what I mean? Like they could, uh, like Kevin Hart. I interviewed him. I interviewed him. He was smooth. Anything I asked him, I, I actually asked him to imitate every wrestler in the company, and he did it for me. We actually have that in a can somewhere in that in the WWE uh, archives. There must be so much in the can that no one has ever seen that oh, they don't even know they have. Hundred and fifty thousand hours or something like that. They don't know. They don't know, but they don't even know they have. They don't even know they have. It's insane. Were you there for the Al Sharpton? Raw, where he tried to leave like an hour in or something. Al Sharpton, I was there for him. I did meet him. I did interview him. I I actually had him endorse Jerry Lawler for the mayor of Memphis. And he did it. (laughs) He did it. Uh, uh, Right, I'm going to ask this one. This is going to be the last one. Uh, and It's going to be best enhancement talent. Who was the best carpenter out there who made the... You can't say yourself. But who were who were the guys who just made the people they were working with look like a million dollars every time? No ego. I can't I can't say myself because I am number one. But I, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that took privileges where they were out there to enhance other people, but yet they would take privileges for themselves. I don't want to say those names. But I would say 90% of the enhancement guys did it. And the beauty about myself is, and I'm not, I'm not putting myself on a a pedestal, is I never did that. My job was to hide their weaknesses, accentuate their strength, their strengths, and don't worry about myself. Like if I wrestle Mark Henry, I say, push me off. And I go all the way back and I fly through the second and top and second rope. People at home are saying, oh, my God, this is the strongest man I've ever seen in my life. You know what I mean? Other people would go back two steps. You know what I mean? Like, go back two or three steps. You know, I always took it to that next level. You told me not to mention myself, and it's a hard thing to do because everybody did it. Everybody took privileges for themselves, and I didn't, which contributed to my 32-year longevity.